So if we just think back to our lesson on uh, Thursday and Friday, we reviewed sine, cosine, and tangent. We were just talking about right angle triangles. Now, obviously, in real life, your triangles aren't always going to be right angle. Um, you can have a non-right angle triangle as shown on this page. So we're going to learn how to figure out the angles and the side lengths of a triangle that is not a right angle triangle. And the two laws that we're going to be reviewing today are sine law and cosine law. I always start off by asking how many of you have kind of learned this before and it's a little bit familiar? Okay, so let me first talk about what the laws are. This right here is the sine law and you can write it in one of two ways. You can write it as sine A over A is equal to sine B over B or you can flip everything around and write it as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. The things to remember is whenever you have something attached to the word sine and or sine cosine, this refers to the angle. So you're going to be putting your angle wherever you have the word sine. And these little letters refer to the side line. And why are there two different types? Well, really, it depends on what you're being asked. If you're being asked to find an angle, then it just makes a little bit of sense to use uh, the formula where the angle is at the top. And if you're being asked to find the side length, it makes sense to use uh, the equations at the bottom. Does it matter? No, not at all. Even if you were to use a different version of this, you would still eventually get to the right answer. Uh, it might just take you a couple of extra steps. Now, do you need all three of them? No, you don't. You only need three pieces of information and you can find out the fourth. Um, but I've written all of them there for you. The second law, which is a little bit harder to memorize, is called the cosine law. Remember it is, you have one of the side lengths squared, then you put a subtraction sign. and then two times B side in ABC format. So you should learn how to write this formula for any triangle that is given to you. This is another way to write that same formula. It's just rearranged. I'm gonna say don't memorize that unless you want to. If you have just one of them, you can very easily manipulate it and rearrange it and figure out what's happening. Okay, now when exactly do you use each law? Um, there are a couple of ways that I learn or I remember this. So you're going to notice that you use the sine law whenever an angle and a side length are given to you. So if you have an angle and right across a bit across it, there is a side length given to you and you have a pair of angle side length, then use sine law. So again, you're going to notice that here we have um, an angle and a side length. And here we can figure out the angle because it's going to be 180 minus the other two and you have the side length. Okay, so when the angle and side length are given, use sine law. And for any other situation, you're going to use cosine law, most specifically when only the side lengths are given to you. Or I call this like the little sandwich. It's called side length, angle, side length. So when the angle is sort of like sandwiched between the two side lengths, that's when we're going to be using cosine law. We're going to do a bunch of questions and then we'll practice doing this. We'll do a couple of word problems as well. And hopefully it will all come back to all right, so in our very first triangle, we have angle A, which is labeled theta. And what I like to do is I first like to go ahead and write down all of the different letters where they belong. So if this is angle A, that means this is going to be side length A. If angle B is 60 degrees, that means this is going to be side length B. And the question is saying solve for all of the unknown angles and all of the unknown sides. So this right here is angle C, and this is going to be side length C. Okay, so anytime you're given a question like this, you're basically should end up with three angles and three side lengths. Um, first of all, let's try and figure out if we should try using sine law or cosine law. In any of these situations, do we have an angle and a side length given to us already? Opposite of one another? Yeah, do you guys notice how we have 60 degrees here and then we have side length B, which is 2.7? When, whenever I find a matching pair like that, I know that we're gonna be using sine law and I'm gonna start there. So let's go ahead and use sine law to try and figure out what um, this angle over here is going to be. 
Now, because I'm trying to find an angle, the formula I'm going to use is sine A. That's basically what I'm trying to find, right? I'm trying to find angle A. So I'm going to write sine A at the top over, and you have to match it up with its side length. So over side length A is equal to, there's no point in us using C. We don't have any information for C, but we do have B. So I'm going to write sine B over B. And what's really important to understand is you can't mix and match. So if you have sine at the top, then in your, the rest of your equation, you have to have sine at the top. Sines must always be at the top, and then side lengths must always be at the bottom, or vice versa. We're ready to plug in our information. So we're going to go sine A over side length A is just 3.1 is equal to sine. And we know what angle B is. It's 60 degrees. So I'm going to write sine 60 over, and we know what side length B is. It's 2.7. So I'm literally just looking at the diagram, and I'm finding my information. I'm putting it into the formula. The calculation for this, in order for us to isolate for angle A, I want whatever is attached to sine A to be moved. So if you guys know cross multiplication, whenever you have a fraction is equal to another fraction, you're allowed to multiply a numerator and a denominator. So I'm actually gonna move that 3.1 and put it next to the sine 60 and multiply those together. So if I were to write all my work, I would write sine A is equal to 3.1 times sine 60 over 2.7. Okay, now you have to remember something. If you're trying to find an angle, what button do we have to use? Sine inverse. If you wanted to do this in parts, the first thing you could do is just do that entire calculation and figure out what sine A is and then take the inverse, or you could do it all in one step. So I'm gonna do it in separate steps. I'm gonna go 3.1 times sine 60 equals sine divided by 2.7. Um, and I get 0 0.994325. So I'm gonna keep as many decimal places as possible. But I'm gonna tell you a little trick. The trick is don't clear your calculator. Once you've figured, once you've figured that out, don't clear it, keep the numbers there. You just have to press second function and sign and equal sign, and then you should get the answer without having to write everything in. So I end up getting angle A to be, we're gonna round to one decimal place. It's gonna be 83.9 degrees. Yeah, you're using the sign inverse button when you're trying to find an angle, exactly. So right over here, if you want, you can just make a little note to yourself, use, Sine inverse. Does that make sense? Also, I was mistaken. The question isn't saying for us to solve for everything. It's just saying solve for the unknown angle or side length. And they're just asking for angle A in this case. So oh, for question B, uh, let's start by first labeling everything. We're trying to find angle A, which means this is side length A, um, this is side length B, and this is side length C. And they haven't given us what angle B or angle C is. So we only know the three side lengths. Um, looking back at your chart, if you've been given the three side lengths, what should you be using, sine law or cosine law? Cosine law is correct. Now, we just lucked out because in this uh, question, uh, we have A, B, and C. So we can actually use whatever formula we have learned. Let's try to do it from memory and um, let's try and not to look at the formula. So I'll tell you how I do it. I go A squared is equal to, I always start with A squared. So even if I'm not trying to find what A squared is, this is the way I do it. Then I list the other two side lengths and I add them together. I two times these two side lengths, so B, C, and then I multiply it with cos, whatever the, 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 the letter on the left is, cos A. Now in this question, are we trying to find side length A or are we trying to find angle A? 
This means that we're going to have to rearrange this formula and isolate just for cos A. I have given you the rearranged version on the front, but I've told you not to memorize it. So if we wanted to actually rearrange it, um, this would be a good practice doing so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move negative 2BC cos A to the other side, and I'm going to move A squared to the other side. Um, when I do this, I'm going to get a uh, positive 2BC cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared. Okay, so I kind of did multiple steps. I, I, I rearranged everything. Move the A squared over, move the 2BC over. Oh, eraser is not working. There we go. And then to isolate for cos A, 2BC. So I'm going to get cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. So if you didn't want to memorize it, this is how you rearrange and find it. And now, honestly, we're just substituting and we're solving. So our next step is going to be, um, let me go ahead and use this. Um, so cos A is equal to B squared is 2.9 squared plus C squared is 3.0 squared minus A squared is 2 squared all over. Here we go. Sorry, uh, minus all over two times B, which is 2.9 times C, which is 3.0. This is gonna be a lot of calculator work, but just be careful and put brackets if you need to or do it in steps. So it's gonna be 2.9 squared plus three squared is just nine, minus two squared is just four divided by two times 2.9 times three equal sign. And I get cos A to be 0 0.77068. And then to solve for angle A, we're gonna go second function cos to give us cos inverse. And I get a final answer of 39.6 degrees. All right, question letter C. First, let's start off with labeling everything. So this time we're not using ABC. Uh, this is gonna be side length E. This is side length F and this is side length D. Uh, and it hasn't asked us for anything. So I'm just gonna say, we're gonna look for E is equal to. I, I should have labeled it um, and I forgot to. So we're gonna all try to find side length E. Okay, now let's see what we have. Do we have a pair of an angle and a side length across from each other that's both given to us? No. In fact, we don't have enough information to even find any of the angles. So we can't use sine law. We have to use cosine law. And go back to your chart. Remember how I told you that there's a one case where it's like a sandwich. The angle is sandwiched between two side lengths. This is called a side length angle, side length triangle. And so we should be using cosine to figure it out. Now, in this example, you're going to notice that we don't have A, B, C, but that's okay. We can just use our thinking to figure out what the formula will be. I'm trying to find E. So I'm going to say E squared is equal to, I'm going to take the square of the other two side lengths and add them together. So E squared is equal to D squared plus F squared. Then I'm going to subtract two times both of those side lengths. So D times F. And then I'm going to write cos of whatever variable is on the left-hand side. Now, if you wanted, I don't recommend this, but if you wanted, you could actually relabel the entire triangle ABC and then just stick to the formula you know. That's fine as well. So just call like E the A and B and C, and that'll work. Exactly. All right, so we're going to sub in our values. We're going to get 11 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 11 times 13. If you're wondering where I'm getting the numbers from, I'm literally just reading it off the triangle. And then times cos of angle E, which is 75 degrees. Now, if we're trying to find the side length, do we have to use the cos inverse button? 
No, we're actually going to be using the proper post button. Okay. Now, in your calculator, you're going to go ahead and put 11 squared plus 13 squared minus, and I put brackets around all that stuff. So I go bracket 2 times 11 times 13 times cos 75, close bracket. And then I press the equal sign to get, I should get a pretty large number, 215. Point nine seven seven seven. Did you guys get that? Okay, now have we solved for E? Have we gotten a final answer? No. How do we how do we get rid of that little square in front of the E? What can we do? Yeah, we're basically gonna square root. And again, my advice to you is when you get that big 15.977, don't clear it from your calculator. I have to do on my calculator is just press the square root button and then press equal and I do get my final answer, which is 14.7 and we need units for side length so it's going to be 14.7. Question D. Um, now question D actually in past in the past when I everything but let's not do that um we're only going to find one of the side lengths so first let's start by labeling it and it doesn't matter what you label what i'm going to call this angle a side, side angle a angle b angle c and this is angle a and this is side length a this is angle b so that means this is side length b this is angle C and this is side length C. And we're gonna go ahead and find a side length C. On an assessment, I would very clearly tell you what you're looking for. Um, I just kept it a little vague in this question in case someone wanted to go ahead and try to solve everything. Okay, so let's analyze this. Now, do we have an angle and a side length that are paired together across from each other? No, however, do you guys notice that we've been given two angles? We've been given 48 and 44. Can we very easily figure out what angle A is? Yeah, by using the interior angle property. So let's go ahead and do that first. I can tell Kareem is in one of his moods. Um, we're gonna go ahead and write angle A is equal to 180 minus 48 minus 44. So 180 minus 48 minus 44 gives us 88 degrees. So I'm just going to add that to our calculation over there. So now that we know what angle A is, we can very easily use our sine law, which is always the easier law to use. Um, so always just look out for a situation where there are two angles given. You can find the third one and then go ahead and use sine law. All right, so let's do that over here. I'm trying to find C. I'm going to rewrite it as C over sine C is equal to. What other letter am I going to use? Yeah, I'm going to go A over sine A. You're going to notice two things that are a little different in this question. First of all, I now have my side length at the top. And the reason why I chose to do this is because I'm trying to find a side length. So it just is a little easier if you have your unknown at the top. And then the second thing I did is if I had sign at the bottom, I made sure I had sign at the bottom for the other equation as well. Okay, let's just plug in our numbers. So it's going to be C over sine and angle C is 44 is equal to A which is 12.8 over sine A. Okay, hopefully you guys saw where I got all the numbers from. Now I'm just gonna move that sine 44 to the top. So it's gonna be 12.8 times sine 44 uh, is equal to, sorry, divide, it's not erasing. Getting rid of the middle term, why? sine 44 all over sine 88. You guys, will we have to use the sine inverse button at any point here? No, because we're trying to find a side length. So it's just gonna be 12.8 times regular sine button 44 um, divided by bracket regular sine button 88. And I get 
meter and meters. Question six, a wire 30 inches long is bent into a triangle with sides measuring six inches, 11 inches, and 13 inches. Find the measure of the largest angle in the triangle. So first we're gonna draw this triangle. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. And um, I know I haven't really drawn it like completely perfectly, but the largest side length is 13. So I'm gonna call this one 13. And the second largest one is 11. And the smallest one is six. Right away, before you even try anything, if you've been given three side lengths, what type of, uh, what law are we gonna use? We're gonna be using cosine law, yeah. Now the, now the question says, find the measure of the largest angle. Um, how do we know what the largest angle is? The largest angle is always opposite of the largest side length. So in this case, we're gonna be trying to find that angle here. Um, because there's no letters given, we can just call this A and we can call this, it doesn't matter. Honestly, we can all call it different things and still get the same answer. And then I know this is gonna be side length A, and this is gonna be side length B, and this is gonna be side length C. So the hardest part about these application questions, I'm gonna say is always drawing the picture. Once you've drawn the picture, the math is pretty straightforward. Um, because we're trying to find angle A, we can uh, use our rearranged version if we want, or we can rearrange it. But I'm just gonna remember that cos A is going to be equal to uh, b squared plus c squared minus a squared. So b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc. The, the conversations you hear when people pass by is just too funny. Okay, so 2BC. So go ahead and plug in your values and see what you get. 11 squared plus 6 squared minus 13 squared all over 2 times 11 times 6. And remember, this is cos A. So I'm going to move it over here. Cos A is going to give me, um, this is 121 plus 36 minus... I think it should be 169 divided by 2 times 11 times 6. And I get negative 0 0.0909. Don't panic. I know you can't have a, a negative angle, but that's just the cos A. When you actually go ahead and do cos inverse, um, you will get a, a, an, a positive angle and you end up getting 95.2 degrees. I lied. We're actually going to do one more word problem and then I promise I'm done because uh, this is too much fun to stop. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Tia and Brayden, so clearly Tia and Brayden are standing on a deck and then they're looking down. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out that these two dots are going to be Tia and Brayden. And I'll, we, it doesn't matter what we call which one, which I'm going to call Brayden on the left and Tia on the right. And the question has told us that they are 12 feet apart. Now they're both looking down. So the angle of depression is from that horizontal down and from Tia down it's 65 degrees and from Braden down it's going to be 28 degrees. So when I make my triangle, it might look something like this. Actually, I'm just going to make it a little bit larger so I can write the numbers a little bit better. So there, there, and there. There we go. Okay, so these guys are 12 feet apart. And from Tia to the goggles is 65 degrees. And from Braden to the goggles, it's 28 degrees. And we're trying to figure out the distance from Tia to the goggles. And by the way, I'm just going to call it goggles G. So we're trying to figure out that little X over there. Looking at the information that's given to us, um, we have, do we have an angle and a side length pair that is matching and like across from each other? 
No. However, we've been given two angles. So what's our first step? Good. We're going to try to figure out what angle G is. So angle G is going to be 180 minus 28 minus 65. So angle G, 180 minus 28 minus 65, it's going to be 87 degrees. So I'm going to put that into our little calculation there. Are we going to be use sine law or cosine law for this question? Sine law. Um, so if, if I just label it B, T, and G, um, across from angle B is side length B, or you can call it X, it's up to you. But if we want to be like proper, it's going to be B over sine B is equal to, and the two that we know is little g over sine G. There is barely any room in this question. So I'm going to come up here. We don't know what B is. We know sine B is sine 28. We know little g is 12 or side length g. And we know sine g is sine 87. To solve for this, you move the sine 28 to the other side. So it's going to be 12 times sine 28 divided by sine 87 to give us 5.6. Is our final answer. Sorry, it was just, there we go. So this is page one of homework. And then this is page two of homework. And if you feel like you still need more practice, you can either do the textbook questions or some of the other questions. But if you do this much, it should be pretty good for practice. 